in 2016, I, I decided to challenge myself, um, and uh, I decided I'm going to design a poster every day for one year. Last year, I said, I finished the first year, and I said, I'm going to do it for another year. And I finished the, the other year, and now I'm doing it for the third year. So in total, <laughs> in total, I've done 756 posters. And uh, the fifth, sixth one is the one I'm going to do today after this. Designers call me an artist. Artists call me a designer. It's difficult coming up with what I am, but I'm just a guy who likes to create stuff and be creative. I'm from Korcha, Albania. I don't know how many here are from Korcha. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. And when I was 14, I was so much into electronic music. I was listening crazy to electronic music, going as much as I could to events about electronic music. I, I started producing electronic music, and I got a contract with a German label where they signed me in the, in the label and wanted me to publish my first EP. And uh, when they uh, proposed an album for the, for the EP, they, they said, uh, do you like this? I'm like, no, uh, I'm going to make something by myself. And I did something, sent it to them, they loved it, and they kept asking me to do it for other artists as well. And then that was the point that I figured out that maybe this is cool, maybe this, I can pursue these two things together, which it ended up not being like that. I switched to design and music was, uh, you know, kind of left it as a hobby apart. I've been into um, electronic music for a very long time, as I said, and something that I was really passionate about. And if you combine both together, there is one point that uh, they all match, and that's designing poster for electronic music. And some of you here in Tirana might know some of these posters that I've done for friends of mine who were organizing events here in Tirana. So that's how I got into posters, and that's why I thought posters were always something cool, because you can express something, you can design, it's, uh, it grabs attention from a lot of people, and so on. Uh, six years ago, um, I, I challenged myself to create a poster every day for 60 days, and I failed on the day 40. And the reason why I failed on day 40 always sort of stuck on me, the reason that I failed as a project, but also that um, I, I failed with the project because I was sharing my posters on my own personal website. So only people who knew about this were only friends and family, and people who I asked to go there from maybe social media. Most of the posters that I'm sharing are on Instagram, and uh, I decided to share it on Instagram because I have a personal account, Vasin Carter, where I was sharing only photography, and I didn't have space to share my designs there. And, um, and then I was thinking like, okay, I have a lot of work for clients, but do I really want to share that? And I was, okay, now maybe it's the time to sort of go back to that project I failed and create a new account on Instagram and just share these designs and design these posters every day. So that's what I did. And uh, then the account went big. A lot of uh, uh, blogs and a lot of websites started getting attention to it, and they started publishing, which helped me engage and, and increase the, the audience. For me, the same project six years ago failed because I was just sharing it on my own personal website. But for me, the right medium was Instagram because I could have shared those posters on Behance, Dribble. For many of you who don't know our websites that designers share their work and their portfolios. But um, I was not sharing them then because probably I would get the same audience from designers that already have seen my work. But I shared it on Instagram and on Instagram you could see a lot of amateurs, people who actually really are into design, maybe they're not getting their hands dirty and going deep into design, but they just, also amateur people who just like good aesthetics. I'm gonna show you quickly some of my favorite posters. So these are some of them. Thank you. If you wanna see all the 700, <laughs> <laughs> you can go on Baugaz and you can scroll. If you, if you like the last one, I know you are a stalker. So I'm going to talk about 10 things that I learned while doing this as a project. On my studio, I have this pegboard where I have all these tools. And on the left side here, this thing is the toolbar on Photoshop. For many of you who might, I'm not going to go technical, but there is a tool that all those tools, you can do something in Photoshop. So basically, it's the same with, with the pegboard I have on my studio. And if you think about it, you have all these tools, and if you combine them all together, you always come up with something unique. 
So that's the approach I was taking to Photoshop. Like, there is a liquefy effect on Photoshop, which basically is used only from photographers to manipulate, move, uh, like slightly uh, fix faces and portraits and stuff like that. And I started using that as a tool for design. And um, that's what I mean by pushing software to its limits, like trying to find all these tools, all these things that you never thought would be using in design. So that's what I did, and these are some of the posters using that technique. Then the other thing that I learned is Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D is a 3D software, is a program like Photoshop that allows you to create 3D objects. So I always was intrigued by, by Cinema 4D, but I always tried to learn it. I would watch a tutorial, learn something, come back after six months, and I would completely had forgotten what I did six months ago. So by doing this as a project, uh, because I had to do it daily, I had to come up with new tools, new ideas, and so on to create. So basically, in a way, I learned the basics of Cinema 4D. I'm still an amateur. There is a lot of work for me to be done in that aspect. So these are some of the posters I learned designing Cinema 4D. You have to get your hands dirty, because most of the stuff I was doing are digital, Photoshop, the 3D program. Then I was, what if I start experimenting with ink, with acrylic ink? And that's what I did. I started um, taking acrylic ink, making, mixing it up together, taking photos, moving to Photoshop, changing a little bit the colors, taking those, moving to the 3D program, and adding on top of that all these textures and coming up with these sort of posters in a way. If you think about posters, you always think a poster is a printed thing. But with the digital age, most of the posters and the designs I was doing, they were mostly shared on social media and on the computer. And then I was, OK, what if a poster in the street would be animated? How would it look if this moved? So that's what I tried to do. So this is one of them. And then I said, I love electronic music. What if I add some sound to this? Another one. quickly because Don't my time is Then you have to make it every day. Every one of us could find one hour to do something they're really passionate and love to do. And that's what I did. I didn't think about time. I didn't think about um, anything else, but just I'm going to do this thing. So s I have friends here. I have family here. They know that I used to go out partying because, as we say, I loved electronic music. But, uh, and then I said, I don't go out anymore. I'm not going to meet any more of my friends and sacrifice to do this as a project. And that's what I did. So kind of disappeared from the Tirana lifestyle. <laughs> but that helped me on manage my time. While doing this as a poster, especially every day, you know, how do you stop? How much time do this poster take me? I could, some of the posters take me five minutes. Some of them might take me 10 minutes. I think the first one took me like five minutes or something. And then how do you know when it's done? When should I publish? And what I learned from, through these years is that I have to post it. So I don't care how good it is. When I know that it's good enough, you have to post it. And there is no finish line, but I had to draw it. So that's another thing I learned. And the other thing I learned is that you're going to get better with time. Because being consistent and trying to do, come up with different stuff every day makes you uh, come up with uh, and, and get better and learn from it. So here are some of my first posters on the first days. And these are by the end of the first year. You can see a big difference there. And my style sort of has evolved. And it's still evolving to 
uh, experiment with new things. The other thing that I learned is that consistency is key. I also have a tattoo about it because um, I sort of uh, heard people saying it before. Be, you have to be consistent, but unless you try it, actually it works. All those things that people tell you, <laughs> it works. And uh, so being consistent is, it helped me to learn new things, to learn new tools, to, to come up with new ideas every day. And um, so that duck, by the way, it's the cheating days. I had to post at midnight, but sometimes I posted at 5 a.m. in the morning because I had to wait for the 3D program to render and finish the stuff. So those are the cheat days, by the way. Um, and the other thing is that I learned <laughs> is that people will copy your work. More audience you get, more people will get inspired from you and start replicating your work. And I didn't know how to handle it in the beginning, but then I said, I have to get over it. Like, this is what's happening. I don't care anymore. And there are 8,700 Baugasm hashtags on Instagram, not used by me because I have only used 700 posters. The other ones are from other people. <laughs> and these are some of the posts. Uh, none of them is mine. The last thing that I learned is that by co collaborating with other designers, not only you get to know other people and learn from their experiences, but you have to make really good friends. I've met so many good friends by doing this as a project the last two years that I would never have um, in otherwise. So connecting with other creatives, sharing your, uh, because I have to do the posters every day, I, s I started thinking why not just invite another designer, get their work, remix, and put it out there and help them grow the audience as well, that would help me grow my audience as well. I guess all of you might be wondering, right? Wh why Baugasm? So it's Bauhaus. From and the other thing that you all got, it's orgasm. I know, right? Mind blowing. <laughs> And then I was sharing Instagram stories while I was designing the posters, and a lot of people were telling me, why don't you make a class, a full tutorial, on teaching what you're doing? And I said, okay, I'm going to do one and see how it goes. And I posted nine classes showing how I did the posters, and in one year, there are 60,000 students watching my classes. <laughs> but let me, let me put that in perspective. For a real teacher teaching on a university, probably it will take two lifetimes to teach that many students. It took me one year, and this is only because of the internet and something that I'm really uh, happy about, that the internet exists because I would never do this thing without it. There are 1.6 million watched on the classes and over 1,000 projects by students submitted with the same design. Thank you. So, uh, if you hustle, and I have a t-shirt saying hustle, if you hustle, good things are going to come after. Like, I got contacted from Adobe and Coca-Cola. They are doing the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo, and they asked me to ju do just one circle design for them. I did 16 designs because of 16 days of the Olympics, one for each day. There were 20 designers hired to do this as a, um, as a project, just to design one artwork, and I ended up doing 16, and they ended up using all the 16. So when you go to their website, uh, <laughs> so that, that ended up being pretty cool because when you go to their website, they would see like 20 designs from other designers and 16 by me. And I was like, okay, I learned something from this. And I have a book that I write all the things that I learn. And one of them is give clients more what they ask for. 
and something that in Albania doesn't often exist. <laughs> and then Adobe, Adobe contacted me again, and this is one of the best projects I worked, and I think it's, uh, I, I would never think that this would happen on my career. Adobe contacts me and tells me, we want you to design the Adobe Illustrator, which is another program like Photoshop, splash screen of 2018. Basically, every designer that uses this program, when they open the program for the first time to go and work in the morning, the first thing they're gonna see is this design. <laughs> One last thing is, after doing this as a fun project, I ended up working with so many clients, and uh, one th last thing I'm gonna say before I go is, uh, there is no change without challenge. I did this uh, in Albania, and uh, the internet has no zip code, and this is something that all creatives and all young people in Albania should know. Doesn't matter where you're born, where you live, it matters what your ambitions are and if you really want to challenge that and change it. 